Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me back out on the banks of the Belmont Estate and we're in search of Mr. Carp in the margin on the float. So we are out today in search of Mr. Carp and we're using the most simplest of methods, the float ledger. It's a method that I used to love using as a kid and does seem to have gone a bit out of favour but it's definitely a method that you can have in your army that can work and you can have plenty of fun. So there is a storm actually due to come in today with winds over 40 mile an hour and you can probably hear it now on the mic getting up. What we'll do is we'll do our best to put together the best video we can on the channel like always and I do hope you enjoy the video. The first spot of the day we've put a bit of bait on one of the other pools down there for later and we can go back and check that. The beauty of this pool it's gin clear. There's a plume of mud just come up there put a little bit of bait in I'm just gonna start just introducing a bit of bait hopefully in this clear water the carp will be coming underneath all these brambles we've got a nice little patch of bait here the beauty of this rig is you can be really accurate with your rig placement I've put all the bait on top of the shelf and on the outside of where my baits gonna be so the fish shouldn't come inside of my float so I've just seen the tail pattern of a carp in the swim just behind the float <laughs> I'm not sure whether it was one of the ghosties it did look a tad bit orange but normally they really do stand out but it's a good sign we've been fishing maybe 15 minutes since we've put bait in but you can just see there how the ghosties give the game away now hopefully in there somewhere with some of the darker carp that you don't see as clear. I always take the ghosties as being the ones that kind of give it away. But with this type of fishing you learn so much about carp. You know how they come in, now he stopped feeding, disappeared and he'll do a circuit and he'll come back. And by watching the carp, you can learn loads for your other types of fishing. All of a sudden, the carp have arrived. You've got Mr. Ghosty there. You've got a carp in the swim. Down there. You can see him on the bottom against the clear sand. There we go. Take too long for that carp to slip up, and it's a nice one. Not one we want to lose. Stop and get him into them snags. Oh, it is a really nice one. I've seen that back <laughs> come up a couple of times. Um, yeah, <laughs> not one we want to lose. We want to get him away from these snags as quick as possible. Just tease him along with There we go. What a beautiful carp that is. Big back and lost all his inhibition. He was in the swim, tail up. And on the simplest of methods, under your feet, it just shows what you can catch. That is a beautiful carp. And I've just put a bit more bait in the swim to give it a bit of a rest. You don't normally get too many chances on here. And you can see that Mr. Coaxty's come back in. Mr. Coaxty. Ghosting in and ghosting out. <laughs> He's definitely, definitely must get caught a lot because he's straight in so the beauty of this type of fishing is you can kind of target the fish that you want or don't want mr ghosty's coming in uh, just move the rig out of the way and just put it off the shelf slightly to that slightly deeper water that wind's getting up now and that storm is definitely moving in it's going to make filming difficult but we're out here doing it aren't we and that's what we do week in week out on the channel so with this type of fishing it is all about really when you cast in the longer you can keep your rod out of the water the better really because there's no line in the water you want to get it so their confidence is up you know that principle i've seen one of the carp come in and drop the rig quietly in and it come in good as gold the wind's getting up there's brollies going everywhere <laughs> blue skies <laughs> and went into another carp <laughs> absolutely wild well, that fish come off the dreaded hook pull right at the net <laughs> and disaster struck it was a beautiful fish as well and uh, not often i get a bit upset when i lose a fish but yeah if jeff's watching the bailiff who's on here he'll know exactly how i felt 
<laughs> and a really quick vlog between the wind gusts. What a beautiful little mirror that is. So while I'm waiting for another bite here, I'll take you back to last Sunday when I was on this venue. Similar tactics, the same bait, and we had a few fish on the bank. So this type of fishing is all about being mobile. You can see, super light. Got me unhooking mat, the tripod, a net, my rod. And in there, I've got all the bits and pieces that I need. And the bait fits underneath. So nice and compact and easy to move about. So taking a look at the bait, you can see there's all different types of sizes of bait. And that just stops the fish getting preoccupied on one size of bait. If you just put the micros in, they can sometimes just ignore the corn. But having all them different sizes of bait will really help in attracting the fish in. And it also gives you a different number of hook baits you can use. So the mix is really super simple. I put some of the little gem pellets in a box. And then I crumble in some of the seafood boilies, the 15 millers. And I've got some of the seafood pellets there as well. On top of all that, I had one tin of sweet corn, one of the large tins, and juice and everything. And that's the only juice that I actually put in. I don't add any water. Give it a good mix. And as you can see, them pellets have just little expanded a little tiny little bit, the small ones, softened up a little bit. It gives you a nice mix to feed the margins with. At the gear that we're using today, I've got my Cordum Glide in 13 foot. Just gives you that extra reach if you've got any marginal snags just to reach out and guide the fish away. I've got one of the switch reels and on there I've got eight pound line. Down to the setup, I've got eight pound line down to two float stops. I've got a cordon quill that's down to a bolt and run kit in small and you can fish that either bolt or free running and that's why I like using it depending on the rules on the venue. I've got a small little bomb and then I've got a hook link of six pound line down to a size 12 hook and three pieces of cord. What I like to do is keep things simple. There's so many things in angling now at the moment. It's as complex as it's ever been. And what I like to do is take the things that have developed over the years and add it to my rig because it adds something to the setup. And that's why I've added in the elements. Having the bait hair rigged and the hook exposed definitely improves the hooking potential of the rig. You know, you've not got to really strike as much because the fish kind of hooks itself when it goes out the swim. Not having weights on the line doesn't, you know, damage the line. Then float stops are not going to damage the line. And yeah, it's just a lot neater. It's not often that I don't get the fight on film, but it was a battle and a half. It had me underneath them brambles to the right of the swim. One minute the float was there. And next minute it was gone. So I've been seeing them ghosties come in for a while now. Just moved into this spot here. Plenty of snags. It hasn't taken too long on the second spot to get a bite. Oh, carp number two. Look at the lovely colours on that. Just waking up from its winter slumber. But that gold tail and that ghost-like head. Not easy on this pool. But moving that spot a little bit along into them trees proving to be the difference. It's a new day now, the wind the other day just got too strong. And as you can see, I've snooked into this swim, dropped a bit of bait in, and you can see them fish have come right in on it straight away. It almost seemed a shame to cast in, but you can just see how putting that bait in and waiting for the right time to cast in so they lose that inhibition is the way to go and you can pick up the rod a bit of bait we've baited up another swim down there that you see me in in the last video and there's already one or two on that it doesn't take too long to get a bend in the rod one of the things that i do love about this type of fishing is how simple it is and easy it is to get out on the bank mixed up a bit more bait the rod was in the car my jumper which is still dirty from the last session was in the boot and you can just nip out on the bank, put in a bit of bait, and spend a few hours on the bank. And boy, is this beautiful carp worth it. We've had some lovely fish on this vlog. Not the easiest to make, but great fun. In seconds, with that quick stop, the bait on the hook, and we're ready to go again. There isn't too many signs in this swim that they've been in, not like the other one. But, by putting that sweet corn in, I can see all that's gone. 
so I know they've been in. And watching these carp, you do learn lessons. The importance of cover, the importance of how quickly you can get a bite when you're not directly over your bait, you know, you're just off the spot. You definitely get a bite quicker by just being just off your patch of bait. And of course, watching those carp feed, you can't help but learn. So there we go, what a stunning little carp that is. Like we said at the start of the video, this pool does hold some good looking carp. And in the years to come, imagine what that's gonna be like if it gets up to double figures. And taking too long for another one of these carp to slip up. Just slowly come into the swim and that float bolted out the swim. A great way to spend an hour or two. Opportunistic fishing. That is the magic of fishing, how we can all just draw our own conclusions from what we see. And it really is good fun just watching them fish come in seeing how they behave and then making your own conclusions from the results but that is another stunning little carp resting it really did pay off because come back i couldn't see any fish in the swim but then a dark shadow came across the swim went straight down and went into another one of these stunning carp so this could be the last carp of the session we've got about half an hour left and it has taken a while to come in the swim, but when they look like that, more than worth the wait, most definitely. And as expected, as the more bait goes in the swim, the better fish have arrived, and this most definitely is a better one. I was just <laughs> looking at my phone like you do, and next minute, the reel was screaming. What a lovely way to end the session. A beautiful, hard-biting carp right at the very end. And like I said, all the fish we've had from this pool have been stunning and in great condition. And this is no different. If you have enjoyed this week's vlog, please leave it a like and subscribe down below. And all that remains is for me to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. And I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.